Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. I am playing Great Personality Guardians, uh, the game. <laughs> with, the game? With the lovely Lauren. Uh, where were we? Sarah was, um, oh, he's looking, she was looking for Mikey. And he disappeared, and he might be a player. You grabbed out your papers, I think he is, and walked over to the conference table he had been sitting at. There's a single piece of paper sitting where you had first met. Oh, dear. You read the note. Hey. Hello. Oh. Are we gonna see you gonna do it? Or are gonna do it? Hey, sorry I had to run. Call me later, Mikey. Yes. There's not even a name. He didn't even hand it to you. It could be for anyone. I thought he said he would say goodbye. Yeah, that's rude, isn't it? Not to say goodbye. Yeah. Your heart sank a little, like the Titanic. Where could he have gone? <laughs> You grabbed the note, packed up your papers with one final look at the office, left down the street. Chapter Shut 6. Six. Six. Oh, I Ooh. love that. It's like a kind of 1950s retro style. Hey, look, it's a jackalope, cool. too. Do they have jackalopes? No, they don't have jackalopes in England, do they? No, no, no. <laughs> you walked quickly down the street, stopping and looking into the window of a nearby tea bar. This was probably as good a place as any to work tonight. You walked in, papers in hand, and sat down at the table in the back. Time passed, and you scribbled furiously on the papers. Your concepts were solidifying nicely. You were completely calm. Thankful that you were here and able to enjoy yourself in such a calm atmosphere. You were... Uh oh You saying that's um, foreshadowing? Yes. Uh, you worked polishing off several pots of tea. Holy fuck, that's a lot of caffeine, isn't it? And that's not cups, that's pots. Pots, you know. <laughs> You're going to have to piss like a racehorse. You were in your element. The barista came over to your table and gently placed her hand on your shoulder. Excuse me, we'll be closed in like five minutes. Uh, thank you. You think she's annoyed? She's like, why have you been sitting here for five hours? <laughs> yeah, just having pots of tea over and over again. You looked at your watch. Midnight? Does it mean you're going to turn into a pumpkin? I might. How is that possible? You looked down at the papers under your hands. There was so much left to do. You knew that both Amelia and Mikey would be happy with whatever you came up with, but you were determined to finish what you had started. You took your phone out of your pocket and made a quick call to Amelia. Give the phone. Ring, ring. <laughs> Hello? Amelia sounded groggy but awake. Hi, Amelia. It's... Oh, it's supposed to be your name there. It's supposed to say Sarah. Oh, okay. So earlier, Mikey in the other episode wasn't supposed to say fuck you. He was supposed to be like Sarah. Oh, okay. Amelia smiled at the end of, other end of the line. I don't know how you knew that, but... Are you still working? I am, and I think you'll be impressed with some of the concepts. I was considering working on this little, uh, this little bit more. You looked around at the barista who nodded and pointed to her <laughs> non-existent watch. Well, <laughs> but my tea bar in this place is going to close down. Why don't you join me? Oh. I'm still up and I can, could use the company. Oh my, you consider it for a moment after weighing the options. I'd love to. Oh. Kinky. After a short That's walk, you... Really were... nice. Well, why she got candles up for you? Because, what is that music right there? Uh oh. I'm sorry, it's like, da -na -na. Where's the chicka wong wong part again? After a short walk, you arrive at Milia's place. Her roommate had gone to bed, though you weren't sure how they could sleep with the music this loud. Milia cleared off a space on her couch, and the two of you sat your booties down, spreading. Oh, spreading your well, papers likes. <laughs> over the coffee table. You explained your concepts to Amelia thoroughly, and the two of you added notes, considering how to flesh out some of the skeletons you created. Your eyelids drooped. Uh-oh. It was exceptionally late, and Amelia was fading fast. You had just finished putting the finishing touches on your proposal and stacking in a neat pile. Amelia turned to you. You're welcome to crash here if you'd like. You look at your phone. There's no use walking home this late at night. Thanks. That'll be great, Ashley. 
Amelia brought you out a couple of blankets and a pillow and saying goodnight, she left you to her room. Or left to her room. <laughs> Thankful that you had finished everything you set out to do today, you smiled and drifted off to sleep feeling very accomplished. Sleep yeah. sounds. Oh, is that a sleep sound? I, oh. I fill out the void because I didn't know what to do. <laughs> the next morning, you woke to the feeling of someone gently sh touching or shaking your arm. Get off my arm. Sarah? Okay. <laughs> Sarah, wake up. You opened your eyes slowly and sat up, slowly remembering that you had spent the night at Amelia's. Oh, thanks. We've got a meeting in a couple of hours with the board. I thought you might want a chance to get home and get ready for the day. I imagine that when she says with the board, like there's literally like a two by four at the end of a table <laughs> that they're meeting with. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. Don't judge. You rubbed your eyes. Shaking my head. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, Amelia led you to the door. Great job last night. I think everyone will be really pl proud of what you've done. Cloud? You Cloud? Smile, they smiled sleepily at her, rubbing your fingers through your hair and straightening out your skirt. I hope so. And then you hit the concrete hard, apparently. Ow, my face. Oh, it Ooh, felt great. Taking a shower. A hot shower, my eyes. Your back was sore from stooping over your work all night. A uh, coffee table was not ergonomically sound option. Running your hands over your face, you pushed your face into a stream of hot <laughs> water. You felt a little ragged. A small spark of excitement grew in your chest. Or oh, you're having a heart attack. I think I am. <laughs> You'd always been proud of your work, but you were hoping that what you had done last night would get you a few points with Mikey. You remember Really? You... Am I still trying? Yes, yes. Um, you remembered um... leaving the workspace last night, and it suddenly got you wondering, where had he gone? What if he was fucking another woman? I think he was, to be honest, or getting some other one to join his, you know. You closed course. your. Oh, sorry. You it's closed a... your eyes for a moment, remembering your night at the club and how his breath felt against your neck as you danced. Ooh. You snapped your eyes open. This was not the time to get distracted. Why, you important shower duties to do? <laughs> cool. Quickly washing your hair, you stepped out of the shower and got ready to head to the meeting. Chapter 7. You arrive, as you arrive to the meeting, you are aware that the board members are sitting around the table chatting, chatting and drinking coffee. You find Amelia, who is standing and serving drinks, and lean in towards her. Wow, for some reason, I don't think there'd be so many people. She shrugs and gestures towards a group in the center. In the corner. Corner and center are spelled very differently. Like I said, I think they'd be impressed. These are the big guns. So now I imagine a 2 by 4 at the head of the table and like two machine guns in the corner. <laughs> oh, oh, attached to a 2 by 4 <laughs> No, those are the oh. corner. Those are the ones you have to go impress. Oh, you nod your head at her. Holding your notes, you look them over, making sure you know exactly how to proceed. Mikey sees you from the other side of the room and gives you a big smile and a wink. You return the smile and hold up your papers as if to show him all the work you've done. Really? Yeah, I know. Really? Is that how you score with a guy? You're like, look, I did papers. I'm going to get laid. He mouths the words. I hate you. Oh, <laughs> You'll do wonderfully. How can you tell those words mean mouth? He gives you the thumbs up your butt. What? You, you take a deep breath in. You were never one for public speaking. In fact, now that you think about it, you actually probably find it about as difficult as dancing. You smile and look across the room at Mikey. He's still gazing at you. You feel your face flush. Oh, <laughs> This better go well. You take a deep, deep breath. <sighs> Amelia raises her voice and steps behind the group. Excuse me, everyone. The room becomes quiet and people turn to look at her and her big hips. I'd like to introduce you to Sarah. Sarah is joining us as a volunteer strategist. 
I'm thrilled to have Sarah joining us. Amelia turns to you and raises her eyebrows. I'm not ready, but are you ready? You nod, lifting the papers high above your head like a simian. Just stay calm. Just stay calm. Addressing the crowd, you're like, your new address is 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. You raise your voice and begin by stating the facts. I don't want to be here. Um, <laughs> it's come to my attention. <laughs> Over the last month, more than $13 million has passed through the cracks in this neighborhood. Holy shit. You continue lifting your chin and looking over the crowd confidently. Whether that was because of lost opportunities in housing, retail space, parking, or money coming in from customer purchases in our stores. The crowd listens intently. You cover the facts of the growing neighborhood, stating areas that can be refreshed and fostered as a part of the upcoming event. As you continue, you raise important issues of community involvement, strategy on how to sustain dick growth over the long term, and details of a plan to make something like this work. The crowd nods along with your facts, and you see several of the board members jotting down notes. Standing up there, you discuss a step-by-step -step plan that would involve the cooperation of some of the prime fundraising groups, including private donations. As you wrap up your speech, you thank the group for listening to the options and encourage them to be proactive in implementing your new plan. This is the proactive part. You're like, do my fucking plan! Do it now! <laughs> you take a small bow... bow. Oh, I can't believe I did that wrong. It's spelled the same way. It's the English language. It trips you up when it spells two <laughs> words the same way but pronounces them differently. You take, take a small bow. you take a small bow you found on a girl's hair and ripped it off. And as you take your seat, you hear some of the board members applaud, others murmuring in excited tones. <laughs> they better be. It seems like your plan might have gone well over over too well. <laughs> well done. Feeling a bit overwhelmed, you walk over to the far corner of the room and get a glass of water. Amelia walks up, and the look on her face is priceless. Great job on the proposal. She reaches out and taps you gently on the arm. You shook. It looks Ow. like she punched you. Yeah, sh yeah, I know. You really have these guys buzzing. See, I told you before, it's a bee. These are honeycombs. They're giant bees. There's the bees at the board meeting, isn't there? Yep. You smile sheepishly, uh, feeling very proud of yourself. Well, thanks for your thoughts last night and other stuff. For let me sleep on your couch as well after. You two share a laugh. Uh. Mikey, <laughs> I think he's getting jealous. I think he's getting jealous now. <laughs> look up to see Mikey standing behind Amelia. He doesn't look very happy. What a great job. Excuse me for a moment. You look like he could use a breather. Distracted by Mikey's glare, you smile weakly at her as she walks back to the group of excited board members. He better not be mad at you. Mikey steps closer to you. Startled by the look in his face, you find yourself leaning away from him. What's going on? Sarah? Finding it hard to smile naturally at him while he looks at you like that, you bite your lip and look him in the eyes, waiting for him to say something. You and I never covered any of those concepts in the meeting yesterday. Oh, he's a control freak. <laughs> Caught off guard, you weren't sure what he was getting at? I never approved them. I'm in a really interesting spot because of what you just said. Your brow furrows and you shift your weight from foot to foot. Is he scolding me for my concepts? You cross your arms in front of you. You're starting to feel really vulnerable with Mikey this close. What do you mean? He leans in and says to you in a whisper, We didn't discuss those plans. I don't know how to explain it any other way. But I, I, I can't have anyone, not even you, going over my head like that in front of these people. Wait, what? You open your mouth, fiercely offended that he would chastise you, you, for helping? On a volunteer project? You look around you, the board members are smiling, talking loudly about the program you proposed. Maybe he's just, like, dick hurt because you came in here and replaced him? Because you're better? And I'm a lot better than it. Yeah, a lot better than him. <laughs> Even from this distance, you could hear them discussing how excited they were. I don't understand. Biting your tongue, you looked at Mikey with skinny eyes. You asked me for my help. 
and my ideas are solid. That's not the problem. See, he's just, then you're the problem. It's a pissing contest. <laughs> you felt your face go red. Oh my! Then what's the problem? You feel bad that you weren't there. I think it's more like. Mm. <laughs> Look, this is a team effort. This concept was the best option for what you needed. Don't get mad when it's you that tasked me to come up with something. You take a deep breath, seething and confused. What are you going to say at a moment like this? I'm going to say, who do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> you would too, wouldn't you? Yeah. Unable to bite your tongue any longer, you shout at him in a quiet, stinging voice. Who do you think you are? Mikey answered without missing a beat. I'm your boss, that's what. How's he your boss? You get paid? <laughs> You narrowed Hello? your eyes at him. Your heart was racing. Mikey paused, his temper getting the best of him. I... You didn't want to say it, but you knew by the look on his face that his pride was hurt and that he was struggling not to take it out on you. But you could see that despite the great moments you had, he wanted to be the one in charge. I don't think this is the right project for you. I'm sorry, Sarah. I don't think we'll need your help any longer. You stood there, mouth open in his shock. Did I just get fired from my volunteer job? You balled up your papers and pushed them into his chesticles. This is a great call. I'm glad I did what I did. Don't let your pride get in the way of doing what's right. You turned you out your... <laughs> <laughs> I, I certainly did not expect the story to take this turn when she was all like love, in love with him and stuff. Yeah. You turned on your heel and left him standing there holding your papers. As you left, you saw a reflection in the glass. Amelia stood there holding a cup of coffee, mouth open, watching you <laughs> walk away, sister. Mikey staring at the papers hung his head. Chop to it. Oh, it's my kitty again. This is the worst. You sat there, head in your hands, reeling from what just happened. The rain started pouring down halfway through your walk home. It seemed fitting. You arrived home drenched with your ego bruised. You had turned your phone off as you left the meeting. It seemed silly, but after a conversation like that, all you wanted to do was be alone. It had taken all of your energy to come up with those concepts. But the thing that hurt you more than the time lost was, was the way Mikey had treated you. You kept running the day's event over in your mind again and again, wondering where you went wrong. You had never had someone dismiss your work like that. You felt humiliated and very, very sad. You lie on your bed, a hollow pit in your stomach. Why <laughs> Why were you feeling it's guilty? taking a dark turn, isn't it? <laughs> it did. How could he have made you feel like you did something wrong? It was late. You knew it was ridiculous, but you needed some space and some time to yourself. Reluctantly, you turned on your phone. Four voicemails. You sighed, looking forlornly out the window into the rain. You didn't want to listen to them. You couldn't imagine that anything on those voicemails could make you feel any better. So you ignored them and buried your face in your pillow. Aww. The next morning, you decided that you were going to shut off your alarm and sleep the entire day. You didn't care. It wasn't like you to fall back on self-destructive tendencies, but but at this point, you didn't give a crap. Who cares if you went out today? Who cares if you took a shower today and stunk? Who cares if you ever leave your bed again, ever again? No one. You picked up your phone. Seven voicemails. You deleted them. Damn. Maybe you should have listened to them. I should have. Turning to Penel Penelope, you pulled her close. Come here, kitty. Just you and me. Everyone else can go to hell. Knock, knock, knock! Fuck off! Uh, go to hell! You yelled at the dog, grabbed a pillow, and threw it over your head. Sir, it's me, Amelia. If you listen real quiet, you can hear the cat purr. Can you? 
you see the cat in the other window as well? I noticed that. I thought the voice miles would all be from that cat just watching them. <laughs> no, no, sir, right up there. I totally did. Yeah, didn't... right there. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like trying to call your cat or just like creepily watching? No, you? that's where all the seven voicemails are from. They're all from my cat. <laughs> open, open up. <laughs> Come on. You fell out of bed and stomped your way to the door. Uh, yeah, you were acting like a child, but remember... No one was going to care what you did. No one that is except maybe Amelia? Amelia walked in with a sour look on her face. Oh, no. No, not you too. You grabbed her by the shoulders and started to push her out the door. <laughs> what? No! Hey! She grabbed onto your kitchen table and pulled her way back into the room. Holy shit. Realizing that she was stronger than she looks, you throw your hands in the air like you just don't care and start walking back towards your bed. Hey! You come back here. You pause and turn around to look at her. You not answering your phone? No. Why not? I don't want to talk to anyone. Come on, sir. She looks at you, ready for you to stop acting like a child. Giving in, you pull out a chair and sit down next to her at the kitchen table. So? You look at her and motion for her to continue. Yeah, I know what happened. You look down at the table and begin brushing the lingering crumbs onto the floor. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm sorry. You shrug. I yelled at Mikey for saying those things he said to you. You sat there digging your fingernails into a crack in the wood. I don't know what came over him. I'm sure it was just a a moment of passion. A moment of douchiness. He's so used to being top dog. There was a raised little bit of wood on the table and you suddenly became very interested in it. You scratched at it with your nail. I guess stuck under my nail. Ow! <laughs> anyway... What matters is that he's sorry. Yeah, he's sorry. You raise your eyebrows, not looking up from the little bit of wood. Did you see the voice man as he left you? Nope. <sighs> what he did was stupid and he knows that. Anyway, I know I had to be a messenger. I just want to make sure you're okay. You caught your nail in the little piece of wood, sending a splinter between your nail bed and your <laughs> finger. Well called. Well, oh, dude. you did call it. Ouch! What the fuck? Oh my god, Sarah! Ow, my finger. <laughs> your finger was bleeding. You pressed down on your nail, a little droplet of blood formed on the end of your finger. Okay. You weren't exactly sure what to do with this information. Is he going to use my plan? You raised your eyes and looked up at Amelia. Yes, Tommy. So you're going to come back and join us? You straightened up. Well, I do need a pay rise. <laughs> it seems everyone has come to their senses. You still feel a little weird, but you figure that the best thing to do would be to at least try to sort things out the adult way. Amelia looked at you waiting for an answer. Okay, okay. Thank God. She sighed and put her arm around you. You're the brains of this operation. We can't do it without you. Especially not now. You smiled, lowering your eyes to the table again. Thanks, Amelia. You felt a lot better. By the way, don't be surprised if Mikey shows up here. What? Why would he do that? Well, you weren't answering your phone. I'm sure he wants to make sure you're okay. If you ask me, I think he's afraid of losing a catch like you over something so stupid. <sighs> a catch? So she knew. You smiled a little. In all of your anger, you were convinced that Mikey had just erased you from his mind. That that one incident was enough to sour the time you spent together. I'm sorry, but that doesn't bode well for a relationship... <laughs> If he's going to be that much trying to pull rank and be that petty about a thing anyway. Yeah, he sounds kind of crazy, to be honest. I'm going to lie. 
You were glad to hear that he was still thinking of you, though. You wondered oh. if... Whoops, sorry. Oh, was I? I you, suppose I was. You wondered if you'd still have the same feelings about him when you saw him next. For now, you weren't sure, but you're willing to find out. You took your time getting ready for the day. As the sun was beginning to set, you heard a knock at your door. Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> you opened the door slowly and sensually. There stood Mikey with a sheepish look on his face. <laughs> Hello. Mikey looked away. You could tell that he was trying really hard to choose the right words. Um, I... I was an idiot. He looked at the floor. I can't believe I... I... I'm sorry. He had a very serious look on his face. The two of you stood in silence for a moment. I feel like I may have really wrecked something special. You shrugged and gave him a smile. You kind of did. <laughs> I have more copies of that document if you need them. He looked at you for a second, then realizing you were trying to lighten the mood, he smiled. I wasn't trying to lighten the mood. <laughs> I was just trying to be professional. Uh, I also find it very convenient that you found my apartment, like some stalker. You tilted your head and gave him a look through your eyebrows. Through your eyebrows? How big are your fucking eyebrows? <laughs> Someone's got Sasquatch brows, apparently. I know, I know. Amelia's great, isn't she? She is. You stood there looking at each other for a while, just staring. Still unsure how this whole misunderstanding affected what you might have had the other night. When I said I was worried that I wrecked something special... I meant it was the paper, wasn't it? <laughs> I meant us. Oh. He stood close to you. There oh. it was again. You wondered maybe Mikey just had that charm. That pull that you felt on the first night. He reached out, grabbing your hand in his. His hand enveloped yours. Pushing his fingers between your fingers. You remembered earlier when you were still unsure of how this would pan out. Thinking, will I still have the same feelings? Your face flushed. Oh. Let me make it up to you. He lowered his eyes, barely spoke, his voice just above a whisper. I want to make it up to you. You realize that you'd been holding your breath. Are you going to pass out now? I think I am. Uh. <laughs> he was so close. You exhaled and closed your eyes for a moment. <gasps> oh, maybe I got ahead of things. <laughs> his hand <laughs> squeezed yours. Please. You could feel him step closer. What do you do? Uh, <laughs> I just got to close your eyes and lean in. Uh, I... Goosebumps. <laughs> Whoa, what was that? You conk heads? I saw the stars. Goosebumps <laughs> raised on your... Sorry. I think we have buzzed. We both got concussions now. <laughs> <laughs> Goosebumps raised on your skin. The chill running over your body. Standing there with your eyes closed, you were back at the club for a moment. Oh, you did get a concussion. <laughs> I told you. Remembering the feeling of your body pressed against his, you slowly opened your eyes, and Mikey's face was so near yours. You shivered. Ooh, all right. He leaned forward and pressed his lips against your ear, whisp your ear, whispering the words, Thank you for letting me to try to make this right. You nodded slowly. This was what you wanted, wasn't it? You were relieved. Desperately uh, relieved that your feelings of anxiety were washing away in this moment. How'd he do it? How'd he know the right things to say? You imagine that you'd been practicing these things so many times before. Uh, the thought made you fiercely jealous, and you quickly swallowed it. Hmm. Um, it's like I should go. You backed away, letting his... room. <laughs> you backed away, letting his hand slide from yours. Uh, thank you, Sarah. I'll make this right. Is that it? Is that it? You gently closed the door, listening to Mikey's footsteps pad softly down the hallway. You stood in the dark for a moment. How could a person understand what to say? And how to say things so acutely? So accurately? <laughs> accurately? Where? How? Um, well, I understand how I was feeling. You walked over to your bed. Dreamily, you wondered what he had planned. And how he'd make it up to you. Chapter 9. I think that's where we're going to end this episode. What's in stock for Mikey and Sarah? Mm. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. If you'd like to check out Lauren's videos, she does some cool ones. Link will be in the description. I forgot to do that in about half of these videos. Sorry about that, Lauren. <laughs>
Thanks. Thanks. I'll see y'all next time. <laughs>